Hi, I'm Will Kaiko Behrens. Welcome to Doc Talks. Today I am joined by Dr. Chris Morphew, DEO of EPLS. And we're going to be talking about the art of negotiating and considering offers. Chris, thanks for joining us today. We hope that our doc students have multiple offers as they uh, finish up their program here. Talk to us a little bit first about the process or uh, what one you know, should, should consider as they look at various offers. Well, I think the um, or an offer singular. Well, offers would be would be better certainly. Yeah, um, sure. I think uh, there are there are a number of factors. Um, you know, typically you'll get back to campus. You'll wait a little while. Um, hopefully, you'll get a call from someone. Calls are generally good news. No yeah. one likes to deliver bad news via call, but sometimes they'll deliver bad news via call as well. Um, what will typically happen is uh, there'll be an email or a contact arranging the, the call, and there'll be a, a conversation uh, quite often with the dean, sometimes with the search committee chair, sometimes with uh, the, the department chair. Um, and um, several details will be laid out. Uh, salary will be laid out. Um, if there is other standard parts of the offer, that might be some startup uh, costs, um, uh, tr maybe travel money. Um, uh, to, to, for you and your family to, to come visit campus and look for a home or uh, moving to campus, those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. those will be sort of the starting, starting points that you'll typically Discussion hear about. points, or will that information arrive in a letter? Uh, I think typically they'll be, you know, that will be laid out verbally. Okay. And a letter would, should be forthcoming, and you should always make sure you get a letter, mm -hmm. um, having this information in written form. And it could be in the, in the written form of an email, but if it comes from, you know, coming from the dean in the form of an email. Um, but, you know, typically just because that's, those are the only variables that are discussed either in that letter or in that phone call doesn't mean that that's where the negotiation has to, has mm -hmm. to stop. Mm -hmm. um, there are there are other variables that you should consider if you're uh, if you're looking at different offers. Mm -hmm. What are some of those variables? Well, I think um, it, it isn't uncommon to ask for a reduced teaching load your first mm -hmm. year. That might be something you wanna uh, you might want to think about. Um, summer salary is often uh, a consideration, and maybe there will be an opportunity for you to ask for a month of summer salary, uh, um, or there would be uh, an opportunity to, to ask about funding for the summer um, in your first year or two. Uh, out. Um, I would also want to find out if the university had a, um, if you are, if you have a partner or a spouse, I'd want to find out if the university had a, a dual career policy mm -hmm. um, and, what, um, and what support there might be for my wife or husband in the community or in the university in terms of finding, finding employment. Um, uh, the uh, salary number is something that you'll want to take some time and think about and see if you want to ask for a, a higher salary than that. Um, a resource that faculty aren't always aware of, but that is available to them, and more so online today than ever before, is um, you can look at the salaries of people in your department online at many mm -hmm. public universities. Uh, the newspaper and the community will often publish that information, and that's something you should take a look at and see where you're, the offer that you're, that you're being made, where that sits with regard to the most recent hires in the department. Um, uh, if you need uh, software for your computer, certain software, if you have hardware needs that are uh, specific to the kinds of work you do, you might want to think about those kinds of things. Um, there's lots of things that you can ask for. I think the important thing is to, um, you know, listen to the conversation that you have with the dean or the chair who is ever making the offer to you. Um, you know, write, take some notes from that conversation down, ask for those things in, in written form, and then take a step back and say, what are some other things that are important to me about this job? Um, don't agree to anything. Certainly, in that first phone call, don't mm -hmm. you know? Don't um, everyone's going to give you some amount of time um, to, to to think about the job? Sure. And I would take that time and, and think very carefully. I would talk to some of my colleagues and, and and mentors and say, you know, these are the offers. What are, this is the offer. Um, what, are, what are some other variables that I might want to ask about? Mm -hmm. Candidates certainly don't want to negotiate themselves out of favor with their mm -hmm. dean, sure. department chairs. So let's return to this idea of salary. Is mm -hmm. there, say, a window? Because I have a feeling candidates get stuck on salary, mm -hmm. even though, like you say, there are so many other significant mm -hmm. variables mm -hmm. in, t in today's modern sure. academy. So, uh, you know, is there a window? Uh, let's say you're not very familiar with the salary range at a particular institution mm -hmm. or in a geographic area. Sure. Are there safe people to ask about that? Well, I think the, the resource that I mentioned before, the if you're at a public university, you can almost certainly find out um, uh, the salary of, of faculty. When I interviewed for when I interviewed the University of Kansas, 
uh, in um, 1996 from from my first faculty job. I took uh, I had a half an hour break and I went over to the library and uh, the budget was right there and I knew exactly what the faculty that had been hired the last few years what they were paid so I had a very good sense of it. Now at private universities it's often harder mm -hmm. to figure out um, but in terms of negotiating yourself out of favor and a, a window to think about um, uh, salary matters. You've, in your first salary matters because um, if you're, you know, 30 years old and you're going to be uh, doing this job for the uh, for the next 30 years or doing a job like this for the where you start out actually does matter. Um, so I would I would um, I would try to get that higher if I could. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't ask for something that was um, uh, unreasonable. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the offer is 55 and you ask for 65, that's pretty unreasonable, I mm -hmm. think. If the offer is 55 and you ask about 58, 59, maybe even 60, that's probably not so unreasonable. Um, I think it's important to remember when you have the offer in your pocket that uh, as soon as you say yes, you lose your leverage. Mm -hmm. Absent some very inappropriate behavior on your, on your part, they're not going to pull the offer back because they want you at yeah. that point. If you're their first choice, they want to hire their first choice. If you're their second choice, which is sometimes pe people feel bad about being the second choice, I had a, a, a good friend of mine who was hired at the University of Kansas the same year I was hired. He knew he was the second choice, and he actually used that to get a higher salary because he knew they didn't want to go to their third choice. The only thing worse than your second choice is your third choice, right? <laughs> sure. So he actually started out a couple thousand dollars higher than I was because I was the first choice and for my search. He was the second choice for his search, and he knew it. And he leveraged that. So should you work with your colleagues and peers <laughs> as you? <laughs> well, there are, you know, there are these job wikis out there. Yeah. And there are these networks. Um, I don't know. I, I don't you know. I'm not up on these things because I'm not actively looking for, for jobs. But um, there, are, there are wikis out there. And there certainly are networks of people who share information about these yeah. things in political science, philosophy, these other areas. I don't know about education per se. But um, you know, I would certainly talk with my friends who are out in the uh, out in the uh, the job market as well, and talk to them about interviews. They're a great source of information. Yeah, are there aspects of the negotiation process that you should keep strictly confidential? Between you and the em employer, or you employer, colleagues, faculty. I mean, is it okay to go to your faculty advisor and say, "I received this offer. What do you think?" Should oh, I, I okay. I, I would. I mean, it depends on your relationship with your faculty advisor. I would. I, I would talk with people who I trust. I would talk with people who I respect, who have experience and, and knowledge. Um, I, you know, it's it's it's. You know, getting that extra two thousand dollars, or getting that you know uh, uh, package, or getting that reduced teaching load is whether you get it or not is is not going to make or break the job for you. Mm -hmm. But it it matters because every raise you get is going to be a function of where you start out. Mm -hmm. So I would certainly talk with people I respect, talk with people who have knowledge about these things, and make sure that I wasn't. Um, that I didn't not ask for things that I should ask for. I think there's there's some research in the field. I study higher education. There's some research in the field that that documents that in fact there are certain populations of people, women, for example, who are less likely to ask about these things, you know, and less likely to push for a higher salary. And the result is, they don't get a higher salary. Mm. Um, and if uh, you don't want to come to campus and find out that if you'd asked for three thousand dollars more, you would have gotten three thousand dollars more. Um, now it won't make or break the job, perhaps, but it's a it's a it's an important starting point financially. Mm -hmm. Let's talk extenuating circumstances. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're on the market and uh, you're ready to go. You're ready to start your first academic job, but you're also perhaps thinking, you know, I am thinking about having a family or starting a mm -hmm. family. Is that something that you bring up during the negotiation process, or do you just wait till it happens? I mean, do you talk about? you know, or explore what are the options here for extending the tenure track, say, for individuals who are interested in, mm -hmm. you know, having a family or doing research abroad or, you know, mm -hmm. any number of variables. Is that something that comes up at that point in time or? I, you know, I probably wouldn't uh, unless I knew my wife was pregnant or unless I was pre had become pregnant, you know, between the interview and the offer or I was pregnant when I interviewed and, you know, didn't share that information. Um, I might ask about that information. I might ask about that information then. But, I, I you know, absent those kinds of immediate circumstances, I, I don't think I would talk about that. You know, who knows if and when that's actually going to happen. Um, 
I don't think you want to send the message in your negotiations that you're looking. You don't ever want to send the message in your negotiation that you're looking to not do the job they hired mm -hmm. you to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, if you if you're aware of something, or if there's a health consideration that's come up in the interim, and you're you, you're you're going to need some sort of accommodation from that, I think you should ask about that. If, mm -hmm. if it if it means if not getting the accommodation means you're not going to be able to do the job or you don't want the job, mm -hmm. then I think you should ask about it. Okay, very good. It's been great talking to you today about the, the art of negotiation. Any final capstone advice for us? Uh, just uh, plan ahead, figure out uh, the kinds of things that will make doing your job uh, uh, easier and your ability to be successful um, uh, more likely and, and try to figure out a way to ask for those things. All right. Thanks, Chris, for joining us.